come back to uh, very uh, a stream full of technical issues, to, to be sure. Well, uh, I, it is week one of NECC. Uh, Trine versus St. Ambrose University, as I'm sure you can all tell by the uh, name there. And we have the draft client up, ready to go. We're just going to jump straight into it. No time to really start things off. Uh, I am going to uh, pull up the stream on my second monitor here in order to make sure that we aren't just like not streaming properly. And then from there, we should be good to go. All right. So, in this draft so far, we have Ash as the first pick. Exceedingly safe. Uh, banned so far, we've had uh, Wukong, Caitlin, and Zach. Banned by St. Ambrose. And Maokai, Silas, and Cassante banned by Trine. So, what's important to note is that uh, the Wukong is really a Trine specialty. Actually, a lot of these champions seem to be targeted specifically at certain players because if we look at it there's not really a lot of uh, the generic picks unlike with oh my goodness all right so we were frozen there for a moment but now we should be fine so try and first pick the Udyr that can go in one of two or three lanes I think so that is a uh, just like a solid flex pick, keeping themselves open. Ezreal usually seen as an ADC, although of course sometimes he can go in the mid lane. Could be another flex pick, or just could be Trine's bottom lane looking to play exceedingly safe. Next up, we have the Vi pick from St. Ambrose. Always a good one, especially since Divine Sunder is so good now. Um, not that it got buffed, but uh, just the prevalence of tank items means that her innate armor shred ability and the fact that Divine Sunderer does max health damage while also giving penetration to both types of resistances uh, just makes it like very helpful. Uh, especially when Udyr right now, I believe, builds Jack Show. It's so like a defensive choice. The Victor pick for St. Ambrose's mid lane. Uh, a very passive mage. Uh, both mid laners are honestly going to just look to uh, play for the uh, trying mid game or late game even, and just sort of handshake the early game. And uh, I'm still working out some technical issues on our end, so we might go down here in a minute. And if we do, I'm very sorry. And uh, if I'm a little too quiet or a little too loud, I will figure that out soon hopefully uh but you know feel free to pop a message in chat <laughs> if you have something you really want me to know try and picking the syndra exactly as expected passive sort of control mage and then we move into the second round of bands it looks like Trine's going to get the camille out of the way followed by saint ambrose immediately getting rid of the orn Try and removing something in uh, using a lot of their time to to figure it out and strategize, which is always always good. Uh, if you hear some noise in the background, I'm very sorry. We have another practice going on in here for a different game, and they are uh, sitting somewhat close to me. So it looks like both teams banned a bunch of top laners in that second round. Makes sense because uh, both teams have not picked top laner and have not picked their support for the game. And you can't really ban out supports effectively. Although sometimes we see people try, um, specifically target banning, try and support Magic Griffin and his uh, 
you know, champion pool. Try and picking the Jarvan. That usually means that it's going jungle and the Udyr is going to the top lane, which I don't know if St. Ambrose is uh, ready to play against. Like I was saying, since they banned both top laners, they probably assumed that uh, the Udyr was for the jungle, which possibly informed their Vi pick as well, so that, that could change a lot for them here in the game. Uh, and instead, we just have a Gnar pick, very safe uh, ranged top laner into Udyr. Unlikely to die very much or very often. And then Varus. It looks like that's an Ash support. So that's going to be two marksmen in the bot lane, which will give them an, an advantage in sieging towers and everything. But if uh, try and pick something aggressive here, or they will pick the Seraphine. I'm not sure how well they're going to be able to punish the double marksman choice, but, um, you know, we shall see. It looks like the Jarvan is really their plan for dealing with that later on in the game. And now we are ready to redo the same draft phase in the client in a moment here. As we can see, uh, both teams are ready and the official NECC production staff are also ready. So this draft should start Hi, any match. moment now. And uh, we are waiting for Trine to get their act together. Let's go. Okay, so we already know exactly what we're going to see from this. We have the, uh, the Wukong gone. It's going to be the same bands in the same order, followed by the same picks, but the order is shuffled. This is where they're actually going, I believe is the normal uh, way this works. There are a lot of people in here on Wednesdays. I'm very sorry. All right, thanks for the update on the audio. That is, uh, oh, and uh, if you can't notice by my delay in reacting to the chat, uh, we are on a three-minute stream delay, which is going to get even worse with the uh, three-minute spectator delay for, uh, you know, the actual game, League of Legends. Which will mean that uh, I will have, I will be three minutes behind the uh, actual action, despite the fact that I can hear the team reacting to it in real time from behind me. You all will be three minutes behind me, so six minutes behind the actual game. Um, I suppose that doesn't really matter as much for you guys, but uh, when the game ends, we had an issue uh, last week where the stream crashed uh, oh, no. it, and when it got to the part of the spectator delay that was exa precisely three minutes behind the game ending. I uh, just didn't really know how to handle that because it wanted to pop up the client and have me look at post-game stats, um, but it couldn't because it was in spectator mode. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Besides that, we've also just been having other technical issues today. Uh, this computer, I think, has crashed like four times since I've been sitting here. So, we're just going to cross our fingers and hope that doesn't happen. And it looks like we had an issue with the uh, draft phase. Hang on, let me, let me find out what happened. Oh. It looks like... St. Ambrose is having a uh, technical issue. So we got even more waiting. Let's go. <laughs> okay, well, any CC production is probably going to be a little mad about that. If I had to guess. Based on uh, the way this lobby has been going this whole time. But you know, hopefully we get through this one. It could also be that they just wanted more time to strategize because they will take the full 30 seconds for at least one of the picks. I guarantee it. it happens every time. You never know why.
fixed up. I don't want to jump into describing matchups yet, because once I start doing that, I run out of content for the three minute delay coming up. And, uh, you know, sitting here in silence is not good for viewer retention. And we're all the way up to nine viewers. It is a 50% increase over our average for the last week. And we got a new follower. Ah. I didn't know you knew Marshall, Tim. So I think I recognize you. Oh, uh, wait. You are, you were in Kappa Sigma. I know that. Because a lot of the team was at one point. And uh, Lobby broke again. Okay, I don't know how they're expecting me to commentate over this, because nothing is happening. Okay, so... It looks like the client is having issues now, which is not anybody's computer's fault. Is in fact uh, just the company that makes League of Legends having a tough time. <laughs> I'm getting some advice on how to commentate over this when we have so little to talk about. And uh, he just says, Will Ferrell. That guy become Will Smith, so uh, I'll I'll try to do that. Yeah, yay, trying. Let's let's hope we get into it this time. Because if we if we restart this one more time, I'm I'm gonna lose it. Okay, so we finally we got, we gotten back to the same point three times now. So everyone cross your fingers, and let's hope it uh, stays normal. It look, every ban, every pick so far has been right. <laughs> no, it's very broken. It's just genuinely very broken. Okay, uh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is a... Woo! For anyone who's just joining us, that is the third time the client has just completely bricked this draft. Um, so we're just waiting for... Getting into the game. Any way that we possibly can... Oh, now we have to redo the lobby. Oh my... Okay. Well, on onward and upward, I guess. <laughs> so, it is Wednesday. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we are waiting for the game of the century. At this point, with this much suspense, if this game isn't like a four hour long epic to rival World's Finals last year, I don't even know what I'll say. Yeah, I fucking knew it. I saw you run <laughs> over there. Yep, okay. I saw you through the ceiling, and I so knew this is the, uh, you definitely fourth time and we have completely changed the way we're doing the lobby so that the client can't do that anymore oh 
Oh my goodness, they did it. I, if Griffin lock, doesn't lock in soon, I will lose my mind. Okay. So now we have the uh, three minute delay. Which, at the end of it, uh, the, the computer might crash and the stream might go down. So that, that's, we've got, but we've gotten past the first tech issue. Um, so hopefully we can just uh, keep rolling here. Well, talking about matchups, we have Nar versus Udyr. I think that is going to be very boring early. Uh, Udyr can't really stick on the Nar. And Jarvan, as Clyde Jungler, doesn't really have a way to knock, lock him down. Uh, same thing for uh, Nar and Vi. I expect them to be running away from each other a lot of the time. Like a uh, Scooby-Doo sort of thing. The jungle, Jarvan, and Vi, I think they're both relatively aggressive early. So that should be... Uh, I'm expecting them to play around mid and bot, honestly. So we might see some action early. In the mid lane, Victor and Syndra, neither of them will do anything to the other one for 20 minutes, and then one of them will just, like, blow up three people at once, and then the game will be over. It's just kind of how these these matchups go for uh, these control mages. And Ferris Ash versus Ezreal Seraphine. Varys Ash are a little bit more aggressive, actually, early than uh, Ezreal Seraphine can be. I guess it depends how good you are at Ezreal. If, of course, if he just constantly lands his abilities uh, between minions, that would be very uh, powerful. But that is even harder than it sounds to, to actually do. And if not, then uh, Varys and Ash can just kind of beat them to death. Why do we have so many viewers now? I mean, uh, 15, but like, you know, normally we're used to like six here. Well, uh, welcome, everyone. And I will be really mad if the stream goes down. I am just not having a good time with this broadcast here. Like, I, I'm, I'm having to fight through Rainbow Six team just decided to form up around me despite the fact that I am at the dedicated streaming computer and I was there before them um, but now they're just like all next to me that's cool you don't really have that much space in here to begin with so I guess it, it, it's not really like they could be that much farther away but it's common courtesy you know all right spectator delay over uh, cross your fingers Loading icon is spinning. We're not getting any bar progress. Uh, oh. Here we go. So let me just take that to borderless, yes. And here we are. Fantastic. We got into the game. So, for anyone who has never been on this broadcast before, I normally just let the directed camera decide what happens because, you know, I don't think I'm better than the algorithm at deciding what's worth watching. But that does mean a lot of the time we end up watching people just farming minions and maybe throwing one ability at each other. Right now it's decided that uh, whoever's pushing the most buttons is the most interesting. So here we have Trine's top laner pushing as many buttons as he can. Uh, well. St. Ambrose's jungle and top lane kind of push up together into the river. Oh, that is some aggressive positioning. It's not going to do anything, but it's just important to note. Actually, Vi uh, kind of went deep for that ward there. 
So now St. Ambrose will have a lot of early information about where Trine's jungle is. See if that pays off for him. All right. Oh, first ability of the game. That's a good trade by Trine. Fantastic. In the uh, jungle, we have both teams starting at the blue buff, which usually means they will show up in the top lane or in the opposite side of the map that they are. And I think three minutes is the benchmark. Oh. Oh, that is a huge chunk of damage coming out in the top lane, just out of nowhere. Level 1. Nar is safe enough that that shouldn't really matter, but... Never say never. Uh, in the mid lane, Victor kind of getting clobbered at the moment by just repeated <laughs> Syndra abilities. And then in the bottom lane, uh, Trine are being pushed in. Doesn't necessarily mean anything yet. But, uh, they are roughly even in CS. Oh, I thought for a moment that was uh, one of the junglers showing up in the top lane, but nope, not yet. Not just yet. <laughs> in the top lane, more damage! As far as starting on Imsgo, I don't see anything weird except that Ezreal started a long sword instead of a Doran's Blade. Uh, I know the meta kind of goes back and forth on what your starting item is, um, but uh, literally like three weeks ago, I had that very same player tell me that uh, buying a long sword first instead of a starter item was kind of a bad decision. And yet, somehow, it's okay when he does it. Oh, that is just Nar getting. Whacked in the top lane. Oh, he goes in a little bit too far. Well, well, he's not going to punish exactly, but he's going to hit him some more. So, three minutes in, nothing has happened. I think for our broadcast last week, three minutes in, uh, there was somewhere between three and five kills this early because teams kept playing very aggressive, which... I'm not going to lie, it was a lot more fun to watch than this is. But, uh, you know, when you're playing at a higher level, you're not expecting that, that first type of game. You're expecting something more like this. Where both teams just go for chip damage for like 20 minutes at a time. Oh my goodness. Nar almost dies in the top lane. Has to trade a flash. Just to get out. And Udyr is healthy enough to definitely just push in the tower. Oh, we get the Ash Flash forward. It's a little too early that Vi can't properly follow up. Trying to just to escape the gank without any uh, negative consequences just yet. So, it looks like... St. Ambrose is really having a an issue here with this sort of long-term attrition-based game plan. Because Trine's jungler is in their jungle right now, just taking their resources. Uh, he knows Vi was just bottom, so he can just take it for free. And then afterwards, it looks like he might decide to go top or just take the uh, the Scuttle Crab. But that is just some free value there that uh, St. Ambrose can't properly contest. And like, we, like we've been seeing them just trade their flashes for nothing. Or, well, in Nar's case, not nothing, but just getting out. Uh, that's good for them, but on the other hand, you definitely uh, want want it to turn into material advantage. Oh, the Nar just barely jumping into tower! Just one absolute pixel over the line, which is going to turn into a kill for Trine. Uh, Trine's top laner playing very aggressively. It almost got him killed there, but uh, the Nar... Couldn't finish him off before trying to escape. And, uh, you know, in trying to escape, ended up going just a little bit too far. In the mid lane, we have Vi attempting a gank, but it's not going to work. Syndra can simply sit under tower 
and stop people from attacking her. It looks like we're going to see St. Ambrose's mid laner back off for a minute here. Perhaps try to get vision control of the river. Yes, he's going to walk up to exactly where Trine just placed a ward. Oh, he's not going to clear it. He's afraid someone's still in the area, which he would be right to do. There is someone in the area. Uh, which is just, again, free value, little little resources here and there. Trine is at the moment 1,000 gold ahead of St. Ambrose, although at six minutes, or at seven minutes, rather, uh, it's not exactly insurmountable. In the top lane, more of the same. Oh, fuck it. I heard you so, uh, neither team is really positioning around Dragon at the moment. Uh, it, it's, it is a little early to go for it, but on the other hand, like, when both teams are this focused on just laning as best as they possibly can, uh, throwing a uh, wrench into that game plan is kind of the way to go. In the top lane, Nar ult coming down because it doesn't have a cooldown or a cost that is relevant. So they can just kind of use it constantly. And now, as I said that, uh, Trine setting up for the Dragon Vise on the top side won't be able to come down to contest it. That's looks like it's going to be a free one for Trine. Uh, if St. Ambrose knows that they're doing it, they no also don't think that they can contest it. So they're just going to let it happen. In the top lane, oh my goodness, what is the Udyr damage? I have never seen that. That is, oh, that is kind of disgusting. The Vi coming to save Nar's life, but they won't be able to get a kill in return unless Vi levels up right now. No. Uh, there are no more minions. She's not going to level up again. And actually, steps just a little bit too far and gets killed by the tower in exchange. St. Ambrose having a real problem with this top lane tower here. And now they know Vi's dead. Uh, where is Jarvan on the map, actually? Oh, oh, they're looking to tower dive in the bottom lane after getting that dragon for free. Ash is only level 5, she can't get out. But Jarvan ult comes down, that is a free kill for Trine. Although, in exchange, Seraphine getting just the tiniest bit caught out. Which, oh, and the Vi coming down too with the flash. They're going to trade a kill, and actually, Vi got level 6 off of that kill and manages to just turn it into a double for their, uh, for their Varus. That is the kind of play they want to make to get back into this, for sure. In the top lane, Nar. Managing to escape with his life. Nope, he's going to go back in. This, I cannot overstate how bad of an idea that was. He could have just gotten out. He just really wanted to make sure Udyr couldn't get a tower plate, but, uh, you know, if you trade your life for it, tower plate's worth, like, 175 gold. Uh... A kill is worth 300. Not really sure what the decision is there. Udyr is now 2-0 and zero with one assist. This is going uh, This is going south quickly in the top lane for St. Ambrose. Although, now that their, uh, their bottom lane is ahead, you might see both junglers focus on either the lane that they're winning or the lane that they're losing. In which case, uh, we can expect to see more sparks. Can you move the Trine watermark away from the map? I totally can. Yes. I just have to have this on screen somewhere because it's required. Um, and I never know where to put it. But that should be better. You're going to see Streamlabs pop up every time I check chat. Just because we don't actually have the technology for two monitors. Uh, in the middle lane, Victor steps just a little bit too far up, but the Seraphine whiffs the root. So that's not going to be a kill for Trine, even though it very much could have. In the bottom lane, Varus knows that Ezreal's alone. Ezreal does not know that Varus is alone, even though he is. Um, so we can see a fight here in a moment. In the top lane. Oh, just the bare miss on the Ash ult. Just too bad. Both teams have three people on their top side, although... 
with Nar being in such a low health. It looks like Trine just going to go for the Rift Tower because they knows they know St. Ambrose can't contest them. Udyr doesn't know that Ash and Vi are there in the jungle, but he does know that the Nar is very low. He might try to tower dive here in a moment. And get killed in exchange. Uh, he does not have ghosts. He does not have flash. He does have teleport. Actually, Nar has teleport too. We could see that come down here in, uh, in the top lane. Oh, he's going to teleport to the second tier tower so that Jarvan and Udyr can't just like jump on him together. Totally the correct decision. Not one that you see a lot. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to say that wasn't the correct decision. He definitely could have just like walked back to lane and gotten there at the, uh, the same time. And either way, Trine is going to get this tower and then they're just going to start running him down. Or not. In the bottom lane, we have the Ash Varus ult combo to just lock down the Ezreal and uh, instantly get a kill. Putting it, the score at uh, 3 to 4 for Trine. And a 2,000 gold lead in Trine's favor. Oh, uh, 3,000, sorry. But, um, you know, that does include first tower and the first dragon. Oh! The flash ult play from the Seraphine, except the Varus arrow manages to come in anyway and get the kill on the Syndra. That is going to be a one for one. And then in the... It looks like we're going to have the Seraphine try to follow up on the Varus, but just barely does not have the damage. So that is a... A huge one for one for St. Ambrose. They're just stacking all these resources onto their Varus late game. We'll have to see if that pays off, but I have to imagine with the Jarvan. Uh, he's going to get locked down and uh, blown up, as ADCs do in this patch. So, Dragon respawning in, I believe, now. Oh, actually, just now. Uh, I was going to say the uh, yellow hourglass icon usually means it's within 30 seconds, but no, could just be now. Uh, Trine are playing around it, but St. Ambrose are grouped up even more. They have all five people close enough to the bottom with uh, Trine's Udyr just all the way away, except it looks like Victor is going up into the top lane. Udyr does have teleport, and now we're just going to see a huge engage, an overcommitment onto the Nar who just jumps out uh, in the top lane, which we're going to cut to for a second. Uh, Victor just getting smacked up by the Udyr. And it looks like Trine are going to take this dragon. They do not believe St. Ambrose can contest it, and it looks like St. Ambrose don't think they can either. They all just kind of backed off after the Gnar almost died, but not quite. He did have to back afterwards to get his health back. So uh, that would be uh, it for him. All right, so that is two dragons for Trine. They have taken the first tower as well. They're looking to take the second tower here in the middle lane. Well. And it'll be a minute, but eventually. And then in the top lane, Udyr just takes the, the blue buff for free. Actually, might be able to kill the Gnar here, too, depending. He does. Gnar flashes out. Udyr goes. But ends up just having to run away because Victor shows up just in time to stop him from tower diving. And the Varus ult just whiffs on the Seraphine, who was predicting it, who knew they were there. Who just wanted to poke him a little bit with her, her abilities. Now that that's down, uh, their bottom lane doesn't really have the pressure that they did, or that they usually do. Um, neither of them have ult up, actually, if Trine noticed the uh, the whiffed Ash ult to the middle lane earlier, like roughly 30 seconds ago. So they could try to push for a tower, or they could just leave. Leaving is probably a smart play. In the top lane, we're having just another beatdown by the Udyr. Like, I know he's ahead. He's not that far ahead. He should not be doing that. And then in the middle lane, we have Victor almost getting blown up, but just flashing out in time. The Jarvan comes, takes the kill anyway. Oh, that's going to turn into two kills for Vi, just with perfect timing. And in the top lane, the unlucky play by the Udyr there tries to engage on the Gnar, he manages to ult just in time, turning it around. Although, for reference, the uh, the gold lead is still 2,000 for Trine. So even with all that going right for them, they're still uh, ha handily behind. They can definitely get back into it, but uh, for the time being, 
They're just trying to work back up here. Actually, the Vi collapsing in on the Ezreal. I know the Vi doesn't have ult. Oh, and with the flash, he might be able to get out. No, just barely doesn't. Trying, looking to turn it around into a kill for them. Uh, unfortunately, the Ash has the flash and the ult and just manages to get away from the Udyr. It's going to be a one for nothing, yep. You know, they just got to keep playing like this. Honestly, St. Ambrose doing very well here, playing, uh, playing to get back into this. Except the Gnar getting caught out a little bit. Just playing way too far up. Uh, but managing to dodge every stun that's thrown at him. And uh, Cinder has had enough, just flashes in and takes it. I'm not really sure where the uh, the gold difference is coming from, honestly, besides the tower, because uh, statistically, St. Ambrose should definitely be, or I would expect St. Ambrose to be much closer than they are. It's probably just the, uh, the, the towers making the difference. The towers and the dragons making the difference here. Udyr can absolutely just blitz down the bottom lane. And it looks like St. Ambrose are looking to send Nar to deal with him. Except at the same time, he's taking Vi's jungle. And on the top side, Trine are just trying to take the second Rift Herald unnoticed. They know they don't have vision in the pit. Oh, but actually, Vi walking by manages to catch out the Seraphine who just gets popped by a Varus arrow from off screen there. And now they're thinking they want to do Rift Herald. Go up to check on it and oh, what's that? Trine has put it at half health for us. So that's going to be their first jungle objective of the game. Uh, probably going to turn into their first tower of the game. If we notice, Nar is pushing up again. Uh, and it looks like Udyr is going down to match him. If, if Nar doesn't play safe enough, Udyr could probably just kill him again. Uh, despite the fact that he managed to get that kill earlier. Because that was with the assistance of a tower that he does not have access to in the bottom lane. And Dragon spawning in a minute or so. Ooh. Yep, that is just a lot of damage coming out from the Varus. Varus and Vi are really St. Ambrose's ticket to victory here. And try and definitely have to start playing uh, more together and much safer. The, the strategy from St. Ambrose seems to be looking for these uh, picks here and there. Just knocking people out uh, one by one when they get a little bit too overexcited, step a little bit too far forward. And it looks like St. Ambrose are trying to take this dragon. Try and do no, and they're coming down to defend it. The Varus ult comes down, but it's not going to turn into anything relevant, it doesn't look like. Oh, actually, the Nar comes in from behind and turns it into a stun. And the Seraphine ult just completely whiffs. This fight is a disaster for Trine. That is going to be a two for one, although actually, two for two. And they shut down the Varus. Uh, big things are happening for Trine here, actually. Especially now that the dragon is down. If uh, Udyr... Actually, they do have their jungler. They might just try to take this here a moment. While Nar focuses on the tower. Actually, all of St. Ambrose focuses on the tower. Jarvan's actually just going to go down and solo the dragon himself. While Seraphine just pokes in the mid lane. Nar knows he has to back. He's just barely out of vision. But if that mini wave stepped a little bit too far up, they would have caught him out. Trying, uh, getting scared off of the dragon by the Nar here who uses his teleport very well to just sort of intimidate. And then we have Udyr teleporting in as well. Oh, the Gnar actually getting caught out. Will this be a kill for Trine? Oh yes, just barely. But Udyr stepped just a little bit too far up. No, he's actually going to be fine. And the Vi going at ham, just absolutely ham sandwich. But it's not going to go end out well for St. Ambrose. And Dragon is still up. Trine now has five people, including their jungler. Well, of course, all five of their people are alive. And they are just going to, uh, yeah, just going to take the dragon here. 
I don't think St. Ambrose can contest it at this point beyond maybe Victor just throwing a laser over the wall and hoping for a steal, but even that, they decide it's not worth the risk. All right, I'm glad you like the new uh, the watermark placement. No shot, right. I just shot across through this window, not knowing they were there. So, no shot. Trine did collect that big bounty that was on Varus' head in that last series of fights. Um, bringing the gold lead back to 3,000 for Trine from the 2,000 it had fallen to. Uh, although I will say that uh, Victor is becoming more of a threat after each one of these fights because he's not dying. And he's just managing to, uh, to get a little bit here and there and assist maybe uh, one kill, maybe. Oh, the Jarvan trying to intimidate the Vi here. Does manage to steal the- Oh! Oh, the Varus just barely being caught out. He's going to get blown up completely. That is three olds down by Trine, but, you know, it's worth it. He's gone. He's He was five and one. Now he's five and two. And they can definitely siege this tower without Varus around to help defend. And Udyr's coming up on the flank. He doesn't know- Oh, now he knows that uh, St. Ambrose have that warded. I was going to say, he didn't know that they knew that he was there. So they definitely could have taken that opportunity to catch him out, but it looks like Nar just wanted to scare him off so that they could go back to uh, maintaining wave pressure, I guess. Actually, I'm not quite sure why he did that. They, they really could have just played around, uh, you know, catching him out there. Oh, and Trine were trying to stack up in that bush there where they know St. Ambrose don't have vision to kill anyone that walks by, but... Ash with the hawk shot, perfect timing, uh, gets vision on them and stops that play from working. And Udir versus Victor, of course, in the bottom lane. Victor has teleport, Udir does not have teleport. This is the exact opposite of the last play. Uh, so we could see St. Ambrose take a uh, 4v4 in the top lane here with Victor teleporting in if necessary because Udir definitely cannot make it if they uh, decide to start fighting over Baron. But on the other hand, if he does that, and Victor does end up have to, having to teleport, that probably turns into another free tower for Trine, which I'm not sure they want to give away this late. Meanwhile, both teams just trying to get vision control across the map. Of course, St. Ambrose is having a much easier time of it because they have the... Uh, What's it called? Umbral Glaive on the Ash. The uh, absolute pinnacle of ward control items. It allows Ash to walk around one-shotting wards while also seeing where they are and stacking with their her actual support sweeper item. So that is uh, definitely powerful. In the bottom lane. Udyr, hitting the minions. So we're going to have a lot of like vision fights in the mid lane here. I guess as both teams kind of passively set up for Baron. Meanwhile, uh, both teams carry is just trying to farm as hard and as fast as I can. Right now it looks like Trine is doing a little better job of it, judging by the, uh, the growing gold lead here, despite the fact that we haven't a ha actually had any interaction between teams in uh, a minute or two. Trying, trying to catch out the Varus. He has the flash. Manages to make it out in time. But he won't have that flash for the next one. Decent play by Trine. Now it looks like St. Ambrose are trying to set up for the Baron, but they really can't afford to at the moment, especially since Trine knows that they're there. And it looks like they're getting the same impression and just walking it out. And Dragon will be up in a minute. So we're going to have a lot more focus on the mid lane and Possibly a, uh, a real fight here in a minute. Actually, Jarvan set up perfectly with the flank. St. Ambrose doesn't know he's there. Yes, he manages to ult two people. Instantly, two kills for Trine. Taking out both of St. Ambrose's bot laners. And then the flash plus the flag and drag gets the Jarvan in range to knock up the Nar. Uh, who is just going to get... Oh. 
St. Ambrose just getting like completely demolished here until they manage to just lock down the, the Udyr under their tower and turn it into a 3 for 1 instead of a 3 for none, although now they definitely can't defend this dragon, which is going to be Dragon Soul, is it? It's the fourth one Trine has taken, uh, which is like a huge passive benefit for the rest of the game. Syndra is going to get caught out here in the top lane, uh, getting a little overzealous trying to go for a tower, but, you know, if you're going to trade one or two team members for a uh, permanent massive buff, I mean, I know I would. Especially when you're still somehow 5,000 gold up. How is this gold lead work? Uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like Nar and Vi are having a problem farming compared to their Trine counterparts. And beyond that, we just have a, like a lot of towers and jungle objectives taken by Trine that St. Ambrose hasn't necessarily been able to match. Although they are trying to sneak the Baron here. All of Trine's team just backed at the same time. Uh, which means that they aren't really in position to contest this. The Udyr's here, but he doesn't have a flash. He can't get over the pit. Yep, that's going to be a Baron for St. Ambrose. Although, you know, Baron buff is temporary. Dragon Soul is forever. And the random Ashul just catching the Syndra. Uh, just three seconds of uh, waiting. It's not... No one was in range to capitalize, but that's very funny. So Trine's got a couple ways they can play this. They can try to wait out the Baron, um, which could goad St. Ambrose into forcing a fight that they can't necessarily win. Uh, or they could just continue what they have been doing and just split push all over the map, although Baron buff will make that work a little bit less. And it looks like they're going with option B. Although for what it's worth, in three minutes, when that Baron buff is gone, Trine will be back in a uh, commanding position here. Although, like I said, the victor getting stronger every fight. He's slowly becoming more and more threatening. He's went from two and one to four and one. And that CS is always going up. Oh, the Ashul catching out the Seraphine who just immediately explodes under a pile of abilities. I couldn't even tell you what happened there. Beyond, uh, she's very dead. And Nar coming around the back, just randomly in range for uh, stunning the Ezreal. And getting very close to killing him, but not quite. San Ambrose again, playing for picks here. Solid strategy. Uh, it seems to be what their comp is designed to do with the Vi and the, uh, the Ash. Can just lock down one person and say, no, you die here. Well, other than that, it's still it's still pretty close. Trine is advantaged with the uh, the two thousand gold lead, but you know it's definitely it's definitely real close. And oh the. Jarvan ult, but the Seraphine ult is just a little bit too far away to properly follow up, except the Udyr managing to be in position to take out the Ash. St. Ambrose is really just trying to disengage here. And it looks like the Udyr... Oh, no, never mind. I was going to say he stepped a little bit too far forward, but he definitely did not. And the Vi is trying to turn it around for her team, but it's not going to work. Every single member of St. Ambrose's team under attack separately, and the Varus cannot hold it down as the last person. And the Udyr teleporting to the top lane. Trine might be able to just end the game here. Actually, well, I mean, they're five seconds out from Ash respawning, but how well can just Ash contest Udyr? I'm not quite sure. Especially considering how much uh, fighting happened in the top lane, despite the fact that Nar also has the same sort of range advantage that Ash would be relying on. Either way, this is going to be a bunch of objectives just for Trine for free. That's one inhibitor... So, uh, one tower so far. They're going to get a second tower in the middle lane and a third one in the bottom lane, actually. Putting the gold lead back... Oh, up to 7,000. Just fantastic. Fantastic play by Trine there. Uh, even though the, uh, the Seraphine ult didn't work out, they managed to play that fight really well.
And remember, now that one team has Dragon Soul, the next dragon that spawns is the Elder Dragon, um, which gives a huge buff to all of your stats and uh, lets you execute the opposing team when they reach 25% health instead of zero. So that is, uh, you know, whichever team gets that, most likely able to end the game, depending on how many people they have alive afterwards. Oh, that's not right. Nope, that's not right. There we go. Yes. So then now... Oh, just random Ezreal taking out more than half of Ash's health bar. She's going to have to back now. Although with the, uh, the global ult... That's not necessarily going to be a problem, even if they fight immediately. Uh, looks like Udyr's trying to control the wave mid and push it into their tower, so that Trine can set up to take the uh, the Elder Dragon I was just talking about. Trine, of course, choosing the uh, the sensible play of waiting in between the St. Ambrose team and the Elder Dragon in an attempt to catch them out. It's not going to spawn for another 30 seconds. And Trine are trying to be just aggressive enough to scare off St. Ambrose, but... Oh, oh my god! Just the immediate ult from the Jarvan, followed by the ult from the Seraphine. And the Nar gets into position to stun two people. But the healing from the Seraphine is going to be too much, and they're going to survive. Oh, even the Vile can't manage to take even a single member of Trine's team down. And the Varus... Oh, that is just a ton of damage, and Victor trying to run away on one health. That is a quadra kill for Ezreal. Oh, oh, I thought we were going to see a Penta there. Well, someone's getting a talking to after that one. But that is a, uh, it's a good time to talk about, uh, you know, the fact that this game is a best of three. So we'll have to see how each team's strategy changes in the next game. But really just a strong play from trying there, especially at the end. In the middle there, they, they kind of fell off a little bit, but... They figured it out. They got it back together. All right. So. Oh, here's something else. The uh, the Trine Esports watermark that's in the bottom left of the screen there. Uh, that's not even our real logo anymore. We just haven't gotten in to update the watermark yet. Because it's, uh, you know, we replaced the, the logo, like, I think two days ago. Actually, I can check. Yeah, so the new logo was, uh, oh, six days ago, sorry. We haven't even gotten it done here. All right. Well. If I can just get a moment here. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, and here we are. Fantastic. Hopefully this lobby does not have as many issues as the last one did. Well, even if it does, if we have a as good a match as that last one, I don't know that I could go blame. So Trine is uh, slowly filing in. Still waiting on two people, I believe. One one person, actually. And then St. Ambrose, of course, just has to get an order. And then from there, we will be fine. Ready to, ready to play our hearts out. 
Well, I always say in between game one, game two, game three, if it gets that far, now is the perfect time to uh, get a snack, get a drink, go to the bathroom, walk the dog, do your laundry, I don't know, uh, depending on how long this takes, make dinner, <laughs> uh, watch a movie if the lobby crashes enough times. Because, you know, we've got this waiting where we have to get everybody in here. Then we have the next set of waiting where they do the draft. Then they redo the draft. Then we have the third part, which is a, a, a full three minutes of <laughs> just like a basically a blank screen. So I'm not really sure how excited all of you are for that. So we need, So for anybody who really wants to jump into the next part, here's what the draft tool looks like in case you've forgotten. Nothing's really going to happen in it just yet, but eventually it will. Now I don't remember if Aurelian Soul is uh, updated in this patch. He has an update scheduled. I believe it's in the most recent patch notes, but he could be on his old version in this patch. Either way, I don't expect people to pick him because he would be too new to play effectively if he was changed, and if he wasn't changed, there's no reason to pick him. He's just very bad. Please get in order and start the draft as soon as possible. He's just saying what we're all thinking. What is, who is wave check? Wave check and notebook need to get it together. I'll figure it out. I don't have to type that. It's not really my job. All right, so something that's kind of important to mention that I don't think I mentioned before the last game is uh, these ranks here, especially this early in the season, are kind of misleading. Like if you see like gold, 20 wins. Uh, they haven't been playing very much. That might not be reflective of their actual skill level. To get a wave check moved over. Should be able to start Actually, I think someone started this because that that bar was not supposed to move just yet. The uh, the draft tool has changed. I guess that just means they're ready. We're just waiting for exactly one of St. Ambrose's players to figure out what's happening right now. Um, might be on a bathroom break, but on the other hand, like we kind of just want to get into this, get it over with, get out of here. Yeah, they, they just genuinely haven't noticed because they said they're ready. They are not ready. Oh, no, just 
did not notice what was happening. All right. Well, now we should be ready for the draft, which means I will switch to the draft tool soon. And we will see our first of two uh, drafts. Hopefully two drafts. Up to four, based on last time, actually. Yeah. Sorry. Let me just... Oh yes, they're both ready. Okay, I'll switch to the draft tool. Okay. <laughs> so, we saw the Silas band last game. Uh, it looks like Trine's not going to... Well, it's a little early to say this, but I don't think Trine's going to switch too much up, judging by how well that last game went for them. Uh, we might see a different strategy from St. Ambrose. Specifically different bands. That's what I would be expecting. Uh, maybe the Udir. That, de that pick definitely seemed to overperform. St. Ambrose proceeded to uh, not ban because someone hit ready for them and then forgot to tell the rest of the team. That's cool. Okay, they're just going to say ban Maokai. Makes sense. So uh, that, that first ba blank slot ban should be Maokai, which I believe was banned last game. Try and banning Swain. That's a new one. We didn't see that. We didn't see that last game, and it wasn't banned last game. So I'm not really sure where that is coming from. What do you mean Link was messed up? They sent the Link, didn't they? Oh no, that's NECC official. Okay, Camille, same ban. Oh, the Udir ban, yes, makes sense. Totally fair. That one was uh, a little too good, some would say. Oh, uh, you know, for anybody who really cares about the uh, a peek behind the curtain here, um, Normally, I'm meant to cast the games that happen on Saturday, except, you know, a bunch of people got sick here, and including our Wednesday caster, so I'm, I'm filling in for him. And then I, the last two Saturdays, I've been either playing with the team as a sub for someone, or, you know, even uh, just not here last week. I, I was uh, a little busy. So try and going to pick the Caitlyn that is just a very safe pick. Just fantastic. Uh, we're going to be much more boring than watching the Ezreal and the Varus throw slingshots at each other. Sejuani pick from St. Ambrose. That can go anywhere. It's kind of like an Udyr, except... Um, no, no, they're pretty much the, exactly the same kind of pick. Uh, they just do a bunch of damage out of nowhere and build almost full tank items and can go top lane jungle or mid in a pinch or even support then we see the ash pick again yeah that is definitely not what went wrong what went wrong for saint ambrose but on the other hand i don't know that committing to the same sort of pick comp is going to work if it didn't already work when trine wasn't expecting it because at this point trine knows what they're looking for here if they pick these same sorts of champions Trundle and Karma. Karma could either be mid or support. Trundle could be jungle or top lane. So, try and keeping themselves flexible for the moment. As they wait to see what St. Ambrose's third pick will be. Three, two, one. Sivir. That's interesting. It definitely doesn't play as well with the Ash as the Varus did. Uh, actually, I don't. I don't necessarily like that. It doesn't really make sense as a uh, a pick here, especially with the Trundle and the Karma already down. You can't really spell shield anything important. Like if the Karma's trying to catch you out with a Q, she just ult Qs you. You take the uh, you take the slow anyway from the field leaves on the ground even if you spell shield it, so that that will be uh, an interesting choice. Right now, 
tried. Or San Ambrose banning the Orn. Again, they're probably just going to ban top laners, and then Trine is going to send the Trundle top lane, and then San Ambrose will freak out about it. Uh, we see the Victor ban from Trine. That was a good pick for St. Ambrose in the last game, and their mid lane is still open. Makes perfect sense. He's no longer in VIP. I was going to sit here and watch. I was just waiting here. How's it going? I was going to sit on a barrier right. door with my so. camera. Then we see the Syndra ban. Makes sense. It was good for Trine. They're just kind of throwing it back and forth. And next up, we will see Trine banning something in five seconds or less. The Kassadin. Again, very interesting. The Swain and the Kassadin are two bans that, uh, that weren't banned last game and weren't even picked in the last game, so I don't know where the, the fear is coming from. Thank you for the follow Mexican link. Yeah. It really means a lot. Uh, we are... We, we've got a small audience for this, so every person counts. See the Vladimir pick from St. Ambrose, kind of just a free roll. Uh, can play incredibly safe while still ending up like top damage later on in the game. So, as far as picks go, that, that's kind of what you do if you're a little afraid of your opponents, but uh, confident that you can still pump out the damage. Try and going to pick a Kali here. That is... What? I, I didn't think anybody on Try and Steam knew how to play a Kali, if, if we're being totally honest. Oh, That's a very me. interesting he one. Pulse, okay, and then next up, I'm just trying to talk over the, the Rainbow Six team. Yeah, Again, they are yeah, right yeah. next to me for some reason, and they are swearing up a storm. This is still an official Trine broadcast. I don't think I'm really supposed to do that. Either way, see the Olaf pick. I have no idea what's going on with Trine's team here. Uh, normally it's Olaf or Trundle, not both. Uh, they're a little too similar, but I guess if St. Ambrose doesn't really have a way to capitalize on, you know, then just sort of running at them, then it kind of makes sense. I'm really interested to see how the Akali plays out, because our, uh, our mid laner before the one we have now actually played Akali a lot, and even he was kind of hesitant to bring it out in actual competitions. And then for St. Ambrose's last pick, we have the Viego, just kind of a standard jungler here. So, you know, not really a surprise. That's fine. Not everything has to be a surprise. Okay. So now we get to wait for uh, both teams to verify that they are ready to start the, uh, the next draft phase, which is the same. Draft phase. Only again and faster. Nice job, so, <laughs> after that uh, happens, man, we'll have three more you minutes of dead air, followed by uh, hopefully a mercifully quick game so that I can get out of here and start doing homework. I've got a uh, quite a bit to to get through tonight, so I really hope we don't go to game three. If we do, then I will be here as always, talking over it. But on the other hand, we can just root for trying here, just because it's the fastest way out of here. Trying, uh, of course, heaven. Their, their mid laner actually has been sick for a while. Hasn't practiced with the team for I think almost a week. So well, definitely didn't look that rusty in the in this last game here. But it's important to note. 
It looks like everyone's ready, so we will get into the next draft phase. In a moment. Who is in charge of the lobby? Oh, it is Chris. Hang on. Okay. Well, if you remember, last time we got into this draft phase, uh, the client just started picking random champions for people. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. But if it does, I think we have a plan for how to deal with it. I'll just leave it where it is. I think it's... The watermark might be a little close to the edge of the screen, but again, like that's not the updated logo. I don't know that it matters. Uh, that's not going to be connected to the Trine branding soon enough. Olaf versus Sejuani in the top lane. Diego versus Trundle in the jungle. Akali versus herself and the, uh, the the 30 second timer making a choice. Yep. Versus Vladimir in the mid lane. So that is all correct so far. Bans, bans. And then we get to the really uh, dangerous part, which is apparently the two, the four bottom laners making choices. The computer doesn't want to let them make. Oh yes, with this delay, that means that they are actually getting to pick their actual characters. Meaning we won't have to restart this lobby. That is fantastic. Karma, of course, delaying the pick because Trine wants time to strategize in the lobby. Good night. And now we have four minutes until we are in the game and ready to watch. So it's your last chance for uh, for water and everything. So as far as matchups go, I think Olaf beats the snot out of Sejuani early. And later, honestly. As long as he doesn't fall behind quickly. Uh, Trundle is less supportive early than Viego. So we'll probably see some more action from the Viego than the Trundle. Uh, Kali into Vladimir. Vladimir is just looking to not die. And to that end, we'll probably stay under tower. Refuse to engage with the lane and press W every time he's in danger to become invincible for two seconds at a time. And then in the bottom line, we have Caitlyn and Karma versus Sivir and Ash. Uh, Caitlyn. Oh, no. Okay. So, I have some bad news. Oh, wait, actually, the lobby might just have broken. Well, the lobby just broke. Okay, so either Riot Games is getting DDoSed, or somebody angered the computer ghosts that inhabit all of our computers. And it looks like Trine's team are uh, restarting their computers in an attempt to make this not happen again I'm really not sure what we should do now
Because I think I'm just supposed to wait until I get re-invited to the lobby. Actually, we can look at the patch notes. Or, or this absolutely bit-crushed video of a uh, LCS skydiving. Oh yes, Aurelian Soul update. Ari update. Umbral Glaive changes. Oh, all the things we were just talking about. It got delayed till an unknown amount of time. On uh, the morning of Thursday the 9th, I guess. So, that'll be cool. Something went wrong. Oh, the. Oh. Love that. Well, restarting the client real quick. Are you kidding me? That should be fine. And then once we do that, then, and only then, will we be able to get into game two, NECC week one. So. Man, I am just so tired of all this. Like, can I get one thing that works how it's supposed to the first time? I've been having a uh, really annoying time, especially with these broadcasts this year, of just, like, nothing ever works. I can never just get, like, a moment of relative peace. Well. Okay, run it. Switch. Too bad. Stupid bitch. Okay. And again, I apologize for the swearing and everything. I don't really have control over that. No. I would. I absolutely would, except I would. Ah, don't hit me. You're in a TK. Oh, bitch. Well, we could actually see the uh, the new update here. So. You know, he's got all these cool abilities, it's like a black hole sort of thing, he can fly around, breathe fire adjacent objects. Uh, shoot meteors. A lot of meteors. I think even like a huge meteor here in a sec. Yep. It's like a big one that makes a big shockwave. That's cool. I don't know what this like client background is. And then of course they have like a cinematic trailer and everything that uh, I would watch on stream if that were an option. And here we have uh, their Lunar New Year event, I believe. Yep. So. You know, if you ever wanted, like, mythologically themed things, there's your, there's your opportunity. Here we are. Let's go. I am blinded by the light. They have a motherfucker inside. And oh again. my goodness. Yeah, fucking, I tag, they have a Ying on site. They also have a Dokubi on site who I tag. I'm so sorry to our 11 viewers. This game was supposed to start... Like ten minutes ago, and of course it didn't, because it can't. Whatever. Here's oh. all the people. <laughs> okay, I got the <sighs> Hopefully they just get in order quickly, and we can just go. Yeah, the players are seemingly as tired of this as I am, Good night. <laughs> and uh, probably as you are. Just until and then last second switch off cab. 
Oh, fantastic. Yes, we can just go. We can just go. So this is just a real disaster of a, a series here. Are we getting into this? Just, just go. Please just go. Oh. Thank everything. What was I saying about these matchups? How far did I get? Oh yeah, Caitlyn and Karma. This is Sivir and Ash. Uh, I think Karma has a lot of pressure early that Sivir and Ash can't really match. Um, but Caitlyn is just sort of like a late game choice. So yeah, we made it. it went into spectator delay. Nothing that bad can happen. Hopefully. So we have three minutes, two and a half minutes roughly. Um, for real this time, this is your last chance to do anything you need to do before 30 minutes of high octane League of Legends action. <laughs> this dude's just outside running around now. Or it's more like 10 minutes of like slow paced, relaxing gameplay, followed by 20 minutes of high octane League of Legends action, if we're being real. <laughs> Forty-five to go. We're not. That's the fun part. We have fun. We laugh. Ha ha ha. On minute and thirty seconds. One minute. And I'm just going insane over here. I, I. There's nothing more to say, really. Uh, I can keep making predictions, but like most of them are going to end up being wrong. Like, we'll get into the game and somehow Akali will have four kills in five minutes. And Trine will end the game in ten seconds flat. Or, like, Viego will take five dragons in a row without anyone noticing. Uh, and then Saint. Saint. Oh my goodness. How am I? St. Ambrose, there we go. I'm having a brain problem right now, I guess. Well, either way. Uh, double marksman into an assassin in the mid lane is kind of scary for St. Ambrose. So if Trine's mid laner manages to get fed early, uh, that could that could be bad. That could be really bad for them. <laughs> Neither Sivir nor Ash really have the ability to get away from an Akali that is actively hunting them down. And here we go onto the actual game. Here in a second. This is game two, NECC of Trine versus. St. Ambrose University. And if something breaks at this point, I am just going to give up and end the broadcast. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, it looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, fantastic. We are actually in it. Let's go. Uh, nothing really too strange on either side this point um, Trine's mid laner going a defensive item on the Akali probably to sustain against a Vladimir who
who of course can out-sustain basically anyone by just pressing Q over and over. And in the top lane we have Olaf posturing aggressively. It's not going to target anything, but now they have a ward on uh, St. Ambrose's top side. They wouldn't have otherwise. Oh no, actually, he forced out the Sejuani's ward. That's not even his ward. So that is, uh, that's going to be big. Especially when the first gank happens at like three-ish minutes. That could mean someone gets caught out. They wouldn't have. It looks like Trundle's going to start topside, as well as Viego also is, which should mean we have a big 3v3 in the bottom lane roughly 3 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Um, as for right now, it just means that both teams are just kind of posturing. Um, both bot laners, or both bot lanes especially, are trying to pretend that uh, their respective jungler is starting on the bottom side, despite the fact that neither of them are. Well, this is much more of a traditional early game, much like the last one with uh, teams just going back and forth, getting chip damage here and there where they can. Oh, actually, that is a lot of damage coming out from the Caitlyn Karma. Oh, that is going to be first blood for the Caitlyn immediately. And the Sivir steps a little bit far up and also just goes down, making it 2-0 in two minutes. And 30 seconds. I take back everything I said. You know what? Well, actually, no. I said in the lobby. I can make more predictions. I'll all be wrong. I said it was going to be like a normal, slower-paced early game, and then suddenly, you know, of course it doesn't. And it didn't even go different in the way that I was expecting it to go different, actually. I think I said mid lane was going to get fed. Uh, or, or jungle, even. As compared to Trine's bottom lane just taking what they came here to get. We are three minutes into the game and Trine is somehow 1.2 thousand gold ahead. Not what you want to see if you're a St. Ambrose fan. On the actual top lane. Uh, we're seeing like, the, the, the poking and everything that I was expecting. Same in the mid lane. Going back and forth. Giving each other a whack here and there. Yep. Oh, actually, the Sejuani putting out just a ton of damage onto the Olaf. And it looks like uh, kind of half heartedly committing to running him down. But not going to go all in on it. And the Vladimir just taking a ton of damage from the Akali, although the Viego's there to back him up. So, it's not going to turn into a kill for Trine anytime soon. Because of the way minion experience works, uh, Trine are now a level down in the bottom lane uh, as they're being pushed into, which is rough. Oh, the Akali does not know the Viego is there. Will she be able to get out? It looks like the answer is yes. Although she does take a lot of damage in the process. She's not going to be able to play up as aggressively as she has been. And in the bottom lane, everything has returned to normal. Oh, actually, the Sivir, kind of getting caught out, has to flash or would have probably died there. Just from the uh, the Karma route, followed up by Caitlyn's entire combo. And the Caitlyn, or the Karma recognizing, like, hey, if I just stand up aggressively, what are they going to do? They don't want to risk dying again. At this point, if they die again, like, the game would pretty much just be locked for trying. <laughs> In the top lane, Olaf has decided to buy a second Doran's Blade instead of a real item. Um, which is a choice you can make. I'm not really sure it's the right one, but it is doing wonders for his ability to sustain early. Which I guess is the, uh, the entire point of it. It's going to hurt when he has to sell it later for some lost gold, but, you know, we take what we can get. Diego is here. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. So, the Viego was trying to gank, and the Sejuani actually even flashed to set it up, but they just weren't ready for the amount of damage that Olaf can put out, so he managed to turn it around, levels up in the process, and gets a double kill, as they both use their flash to try to kill him. You really hate to see it. Oh, and in the bottom lane, that is Sivir getting caught out, although Ash manages to tank the Caitlyn Trap for her to stop trying from getting a kill, although now they have both have to back. While Trine is taking Dragon, and I don't even think St. Ambrose knows that Dragon is happening, that is going to be the first one of the game, and as we saw in the last one, like, if you can't stop it now, when can you stop it, you know? Karma is playing up, as she should. Uh, oh, Trundle got a little scared there and had to flash out, and looks like Vladimir's coming down too. Uh, St. Ambrose are managing to turn this around and take the Dragon instead. Although, they lose focus on it, going for a kill instead, which means Trundle gets it. That is a permanent buff for Trine's team, compared to one kill for St. Ambrose. Like, you know, both teams got good... Oh, never mind. That's going to turn into two kills for Akali. And Akali, notoriously good at turning one or two kills into many, many more kills. So, you really hate to see it if you are a St. Ambrose fan. Oh, and the Sivir just barely getting caught out by the Caitlyn Q. I don't even think Caitlyn expected that to work. That just seemed like a do it because you can try sort of thing, not like a this is going to work sort of thing. So it is now 7-1 for trying. Uh, roughly 3,000 gold ahead in seven minutes. Ooh. Definitely some solid play all around by trying at the moment. Meanwhile, Ash can barely even walk up to defend this tower without taking just a ton of chip damage here and there from uh, Karma and Caitlyn's just long-ranged abilities. And Olaf doing the uh, almighty trade combo of just pressing Q on them twice. Powerful stuff. He's stepping a little too far up. I think. Although, of course, it doesn't necessarily matter. He has a lot of lifesteal. And trying in the bottom lane is just bleeding or taking these tower plates just slowly from uh, St. Ambrose. You know what? Each one of them is worth 175 gold. Vladimir just manages to go invincible to set up for the Viego to come gank. Which does mean that uh, Holly gets killed. It is the second kill for St. Ambrose. And it is a 150 gold shutdown, I believe. It's important, but they need a lot more like that. Pretty quick. And try and tuck the Rift Herald at some point and all that too. They're just dropping it in the top lane. That's going to be at least two tower plates, maybe one more. Actually, the Sejuani's going to the bottom lane. As soon as Olaf sees her show up down there, he's probably just going to commit to taking the entire tower. Which, especially this early, is a bad sign. Oh, the Ash stepped a little bit too far forward, but it's actually just a bait for four people to come to the Trine bottom lane and get a kill. I mean, that is some heavy investment. Now Akali and Olaf know that no one is around to uh, to contest anything they want to do. And like I like I expected, Olaf is just taking this tower. Seven to three from seven and one. This is a good showing by St. Ambrose, but again, they need they need a lot more like it. And they need uh they need to sort of up the tempo of their comeback here. Actually, all of their value right now is on the Viego. Uh, which is kind of rough, seeing as he's also died twice. So they're going to have a bit of a problem. 
in all of the lanes that Viego isn't at any given time. <laughs> look, look if I landed on landed watch this. Plus, now that Olaf has just taken a tower, he could probably just run down the Sejuani anytime he wants by just pushing ult and like walking forwards. Especially if she pushes as far up as she is right now. Which honestly isn't even that far up in the grand scheme of things, but, you know. Olaf, you can't stop him from chasing you if he decides he wants to. And Sejuani's trying to come down and try to set up a play on Akali, who is actually just leaving. So that's too bad. Dragon will be up here in a minute. And it looks like St. Ambrose are trying to set up for it by playing around the mid lane here. Although their bot lane is losing all pressure by uh, the mere fact that they are very behind. So they can't really go on the dragon just yet. But then again, Trine can't either. Oh, and the Trundle walking forward just kind of getting caught out. That's going to be another kill for the Viego. And that is Trine's jungler down, which means St. Ambrose might be able to take this dragon mostly uncontested. As we see Olaf in the top lane just hitting the tower. Yep, that is a uh, uncontested free dragon. So they have gone one for one on that. And yet somehow are still 4,000 gold down. Oh. Ash walks up just a little too far forward and gets killed for it. I don't even think she knew like, that her dying there was even a possibility. That was uh, very unlucky. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Sejuani has to ult and flash out uh, in order to not die to the Olaf. As Caitlyn is just whacking this tower in the bottom lane, but Sejuani's coming down. They do know that she's there, but they can't really stop her. The Ashult coming in from way downtown, and the Viego flash is going to turn into a kill for St. Ambrose. Olaf can't really get in here, but Trundle is in position behind them. He's got the flank. He does not have the pillar up, though. He cannot actually engage. St. Ambrose playing very well, catching up. Slowly, one fight after another. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, uh... Olaf is still a big threat that they haven't really managed to deal with yet. Uh, they kind of need to shut down his gold generation here soon because the more items he gets the harder it's going to be to uh to stop him from just sort of running at sever until she dies uh we're gonna have the second rift herald spawn here in i think a minute or so which olaf and trundle should be able to get practically uncontested because of how much pressure they put out in the top lane combined with the fact that karma and caitlin are still pushing in the bottom lane and they're probably just going to get a tower here as Vladimir comes down to contest him. I don't know if Vladimir is enough on his own. Even if he is, like, he's not going to get there in time. <laughs> and Sejuani no! always staying just a few steps out of reach for Olaf, except Olaf is just coming around on the random blue trinket from, from Sejuani there. Stops the, uh, the play. Although, now we have Sivir getting caught out. She's in the middle of everything. And then we have the, uh, ah, yes, okay, that is the Karma W into the root, into the Caitlyn combo. That is a solid kill for Trine. That is two for zero. Immediately as the Rift Herald spawns, which means they should be able to get that. And then Karma and Caitlyn could probably get this tower. And they're not even going to trade the tower in the bottom lane, because Akali still has Teleport up and is going to use it to defend. Although, Karma ending up caught out by these long-range Sejuani ult. Means that Trine will not get that center tower just yet, unless they drop a Rift Herald here. And then, uh, even after that, they did get a big shutdown. So, Vladimir looks caught out, but 
Was it really just a bait for Viego to show up? Now Akali's on the back foot, running away. I mean, she doesn't get out of this one. Yeah. Meanwhile, trying just running down the mid lane here. Just, again, massive amounts of poke. Followed by the Ashel to try to turn into a kill, except the Olaf has the ult ready. They can't kill him. Oh, except the Viego, just barely in range, manages to turn it into a kill. Meanwhile, Vladimir ghosts, cools, and runs away because he gets scared. This game feels so much closer than it statistically is. I still don't understand where this gold gap is coming from for Trine. Like, even in the last game, you know, they're close in kills. It's really just towers and jungle objectives, I think, that's making all the difference. Um, but it definitely does make a big difference. It can change the whole landscape of the game. You know, a thousand gold here or there split across the team. Especially considering that Caitlyn, I believe, goes on a cheaper build path than uh, Sivir does. Sivir, of course, buying Infinity Edge and uh, I want to say the armor penetration item, both of which are very expensive in their own rights. Meanwhile, Caitlyn can afford to just go like Phantom Dancer after Gale Force, both of which are cheaper, um, more gold efficient. Well, not more gold efficient necessarily, but they do get them earlier. And Trundle just getting caught out by the Ashold. Uh, he tries to flash out, but it's not going to work because Diego has flash to follow, or has ult to follow. Actually, he didn't. He didn't even have to flash for that. And now, Saint Ambrose are taking this dragon uncontested as Olaf continues to just push down the top lane. Uh, Karma almost getting caught out, but of course can just run away with a large amount of movement speed. As St. Ambrose lo lose yet another tower. Putting the gold lead at 6,002 trying for some reason. Um, although St. Ambrose are now ahead in dragons, which is a very important metric. Especially when one of them is the uh, the fire dragon that just makes you do more damage. And we don't have any more messages. For now, Trine should really just focus on playing much safer because they keep getting caught out. Uh, by the Ashold, which is exactly the same strategy that St. Ambrose used in the last game. So I'm not really sure how they aren't prepared for it by this point. Either way, these matchups are staying the same with uh, Olaf versus Vladimir in the top lane. Both bottom laners, both sets of bottom laners in the mid lane. And Sejuani and Akali in the bottom lane. As Viego roams the map getting kills, and Trundle roams the map uh, clearing jungle camps and getting towers. Ultimately, towers win the games, whereas kills really don't. Then again, all of Trine's gold is split up across all five of their teammates. Whereas uh, St. Ambrose's entire team is Viego. That's bad, because it means if Viego ever dies, they kind of just lose the fight from there. But it's good, because it means that, uh, you know, they have a player who can single-handedly defeat practically anyone on Trine's team right now. If they aren't ready for it. Which, especially in combination with an Ashold, is a very good thing to have. <coughs> I need to drink some water. The next objective that's up is just Baron on the top side. Both teams are kind of passively playing around it right now, but it doesn't look like either of them are trying to uh, actually start anything with it just yet.
If both teams just continue farming, Trine has the advantage here. Uh, just because, like, you know. Other than Viego, each of Trine's team members is more fed than their counterpart. So if everybody continues to just get items, eventually Viego will hit an upper limit to how useful he can be. Well, uh, everybody else still has room to grow. Trying, trying to catch out the Ash, but Sejuani's ready for it. But the Ash still has to flash out anyway. Uh, it's a very active play on both sides, although nothing really happened. I guess Trine did get St. Ambrose to trade two ultimates for practically no resources, which is fantastic for them. And Ash's flash, that is a... That was actually a solid play. Meanwhile, uh... In the mid lane, Karma's just trying to catch someone out. It's not really working just yet. Uh, everybody's just playing like really safe, really far back. Although Dragon will be up again in a minute, so that should probably force a fight. Actually, they're forcing a fight in the mid lane right now. Sivir's a little bit too far forward, but has ult and ghost to get out. So that's not going to be a kill. Just yet. Oh, she even flashed. So again, just like last game, uh, St. Ambrose are slowly running out of resources here as they keep having to respond to what Trine are doing. Um, which should mean eventually that Trine just wins a big fight and proceeds to snowball the game from there. So that's kind of what we saw in the last one. Where we went into this sort of maintenance mode for uh, five, ten minutes. And then all of a sudden, Trine just started, like, blowing people up. Oh, actually, we might see that right now, yes. Nobody can fight the Olaf at the moment, and he's still CC immune. They managed to get the immunity to come down, but not fast enough to stop Ash from dying to him. The dragon is up, Trundle's taking it on his own. Meanwhile, Olaf, still ready to fight. Sivir is stepping up, but nobody's there to help her, so she can't really turn that into a fight. Meanwhile, Akali's just trying to take the bottom lane tower. Sivir has to stop and try to defend the middle lane tower. And no one is defending the dragon. That is uh, evening up. The dragon's taken. Meanwhile, uh, Akali, it looks like, just barely not managing to take the tower, but next time she pushes up to it, she definitely will. And there definitely will be a next time. She has teleport. Meanwhile, uh, only Sejuani on St. Ambrose's team does. So th that is two teleports to one. The amount of global pressure Trine can put out at the moment is not something St. Ambrose can easily match. Meanwhile, Vladimir is messing around with an Olaf. You should definitely not be doing that, except Viego's on his way up. Spotted out on a ward. Will Olaf be able to get out in time? It looks lo like it, just barely. As Akali goes back to uh, anti Sejuani jail. And Caitlyn proceeds to uh, middle lane. And everything returns back to the status quo. Again, the only uh, objective up is Baron, but the last time I said that, we proceeded to not worry about the Baron or interact at all in between teams for like five minutes until Dragon came up, so I might be expecting a little more of that unless somebody unexpectedly wins a big fight here. So I didn't want to mention it last game. It just felt kind of mean-spirited when uh, St. Ambrose were already losing. But I'm not really sure about the Ash pick here. Uh, last game, I think, ended up roughly the same place. Right now, the Ash is 0-5. and five. Uh, It's a bad place to be. Maybe something safer would, uh, would serve the team better. Like... Yeah, especially if these ults keep missing. 
really you can just go with something like uh, Blitzcrank, which is basically the same but safer. You can go with like something more defensive too. Oh! Karma steps a little too far up, catches the Sejuani ult to the face, but Trine manages to just run out trading. Actually, even getting the uh, the Sivir ult there, too. Just for free. Two for one deal. As we see uh, Olaf scaring off the Vladimir in the top lane. He knows he can't fight him. Not yet, anyway. Oh, we're getting another Ash ult from way downtown. This one hits. Just barely. Which is going to turn into a kill for St. Ambrose. And uh, Olaf does not have ult up. He can't really afford to fight here. Just a solid play. Oh, the, the Akali flashing in. Uh, trying to make a play, but instantly catching a stun and dying for trouble. Well, trading one for one, actually, with the Zidwani. And yet, somehow, they're still 6,000 gold down. They w I guess it doesn't matter, because they're winning these fights, but... They need to really work on their objective control, I think. Like I said, the big difference maker in the, uh, the fight that Trine won was... That Viego got caught out and died, and right now he's their whole team. They don't really have anything going for them besides him. And as long as he continues to just take all the kills, they're not going to. Even, even as they try to get back into this. Which uh, is an oversight that might come back to haunt them. He has 8 of their 12 kills. Which is just insane. Anywhere he isn't is exceedingly safe for Trine. Trine, meanwhile, are just trying to rush down this Baron that uh, St. Ambrose are just not ready for because they know the dragon's coming up. Oh, actually, I think that was just an oversight on Trine's part. Some, some confused signals here. They got off the Baron. They're going back to the Baron. They're trading the dragon for it. They're not trading the dragon for it. Sejuani's coming down. Trundle's just not ready. This is an exceedingly sloppy play. They can't even take the Baron now. They waited too long. <coughs> not something you want to see as a Trine fan, to be honest. Meanwhile, Sejuani just kind of throws an ult down. It misses, but, you know, imagine if it hit. And then they get the Sivir ult, too. Ash catching a bullet with her face and flashing out, as she is wont to do. Trine does just manage to rush down a tower there. You know, they, they really just got to keep doing that like four more times and then they can just win the game. That's an oversimplification, but, you know, in a very technical sense, it's true. Meanwhile, Sejuani is in the bottom lane watching as Akali farms. Not actually walking up to contest it at all, just sort of standing there, menacing. Two of Trine's team members have big bounties exclusively from farming, I guess? Just from, like, getting lots of last hits. Because the gold lead has expanded to 6,000 in favor of Trine, despite the fact that St. Ambrose University are only one kill down. Actually, how are they one kill down? When did that happen? It feels like they're winning every fight, and yet, somehow, they're losing. Just can't explain it.
Tryon are looking to rush down this Baron. Sejuani is not prepared to defend it. Sivir is just backing. Vladimir is on the top side, but do they even know? No, I guess not. It is an uncontested Baron just randomly in the middle of the game. Uh, I'm not going to lie, this is a weird one. I take back what I said about the Ash pick, honestly. The uh, the random Ash ults are really what's helping keep them in this. Just something that Viego can capitalize on that uh, Trine are having trouble outplaying. Meanwhile, Olaf with Baron buff could probably just take their whole base by himself if they don't send more than Vladimir to come deal with him. Where did he take... oh yes. Olaf has Bramble Vest, um, which means he does damage in return when people hit him. Which means he can't just sort of run under tower and turn his brain off because uh, he will take tower aggro for air quotes dealing damage. St. Ambrose know right now that they have to choose to either have Sejuani with them or lose that bot lane tower. Nope. Have Sejuani deal with the uh, the constant pressure in the bot lane, or lose that bot lane tower and have uh, no uh, or and have Sejuani with them, which means they have to come up with some sort of fight plan that doesn't involve the Sejuani doing anything. Oh, Sivir just randomly getting caught out in the middle of the lane, followed by just another turret for trying immediately. The Ash ult from nowhere, but no one can follow up on it. Trundle walks a little bit too far forward and takes a chunk of damage, but with the flash he can get out just safe. Dragon spawning in a minute in the mid lane. Caitlyn is just taking a tower unimpeded. Vladimir is going down to deal with the Caitlyn. He might get it, but even still, the Olaf is just in the top lane with the tower unguarded. As Trine are simultaneously putting pressure on the top and bottom sides of the map. Now that the tower's not here, he really can just run at the Vladimir until he falls over. Yeah, and it looks like that's going to be the game plan. Oh, actually, no, a second set of invincibility from the Vladimir, who is showing that he is a brave, brave man and is definitely not scared out of his mind. Uh, the Vladimir coming to go deal with the Olaf, although actually with the Sterics and the amount of healing that Olaf can put out, plus Caitlyn there to defend him, it's not... They're actually going to be able to turn that on the Viego, although the Sivir... Manages to get a kill in exchange, except now Trine are behind them, coming from their own base, running them down. Uh, they get away, but at what cost? I mean, they're going to lose a, their third inhibitor here? And then Trine can go take a dragon for free. That's going to be their third dragon in the game. It's going to delay any potential like push for Dragon Soul that uh, St. Ambrose can even try for. And then, you know, if they win another one like that, they either just end the game, they get Dragon Soul, they get another Baron, like... Not a good place for St. Ambrose to be. Although for what it's worth, four members of their team are up, they are coming down to contest this Dragon. It's just Trundle takes it really fast, especially when assisted by an Akali with at least two items, which this Akali does have. They catch the Ash ult. Uh, unfortunately, nobody is really there to follow up on it. And Viego is too far away. Trundle manages to take the Dragon. And it looks like all of Trine's team are going to get out. As they just get the immense passive pressure of three lanes full of super minions pushing down their walls. St. Ambrose actually only have one in, uh, Nexus Tower even left. So they're very close to being in a position where Olaf can just walk towards the tower and end the game on his own. Especially considering now that he has... Uh, Four and a half items. Actually, if you count boots, it's more like five and a half. Like I said, uh, they kept giving all the resources to the Viego, who has kind of fallen off here, just because, like, eventually everyone gets to four items, right? So being at four items is no longer, like, special or powerful. They didn't push their advantage while they had it, and now it's kind of going away. Oh, the Ash ult. Oh, the whiff. 
Ah, the Karma manages to dodge it at the last second. That would have been a very good fight for St. Ambrose to take, if only. Meanwhile, in the top lane, just Viego getting... No, Vladimir getting bullied by the Caitlyn. Akali is caught out by the Sejuani. That's going to be a one-for-one. One. Except, no, all of St. Ambrose are out of their own base. The tower is unguarded, and Trundle and Caitlyn are just there. They can just start hitting it. The Nexus is exposed. They're just going to go for it. They're just going to ignore St. Ambrose entirely. And it looks like, yes, this is going to be the end of the game. That is the end of game two of NECC. Trine versus St. Ambrose University. A very exciting ending there. And that will mean that the round is officially over, I believe. So uh, what what is there next to do, even? I guess pretty much just sign off. <laughs> yeah. So short two-game best of three there with uh, roughly an hour and a half of technical issues thrown in. So that's fun, some fun stuff. And I think... Kind of anticlimactic, honestly. Like, it was exciting, but like, huh, you know? Yeah, okay. Well, hopefully our next broadcast is not as uh, technically challenging. And it's a little more... Um, well, yeah, this one was fairly evenly matched, I guess. We can, we can take that. Well, that said, uh, I guess... There will be a broadcast this Saturday that will be, um, what's the status of the match? Oh, well, the status of the match is that it's over, actually. Um, there will be a broadcast this Saturday that will just be uh, games played for, I believe, C-Lol, um, just with uh, no commentary, just the, uh, just the matches. So that's something you're interested in. I believe that starts 3 p.m., Saturday. If you uh, if you don't care for that, I should be back uh, either Wednesday or Saturday, depending on uh, how much better Harrison's doing. Uh, that said, have a uh, have a wonderful rest of your week, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this Trine Esports broadcast.